Welcome to the Remarkable Riparian Digital Short Course, an online education series covering the basics of riparian understanding. This self-paced learning program is produced by the Nueces River Authority in Texas, but the concepts presented here are pretty much universal to all natural waterways. In Lesson 2, you learn the definition of riparian and how to recognize a functioning riparian area. In Lesson 3, we'll take a look at the many ways humans value their creeks and rivers and how riparian function produces these values. But first, let's make sure we have a common understanding of what riparian means. This is a term that has really only come into common usage in Texas in the past 10 to 15 years, even among land management professionals. A riparian area or zone is the part of the landscape that rivers and streams flow through, shown in blue on this picture. This includes the stream bank, floodplain, plants, soils, and rocks that make up the ribbon of land that follows and interacts with the waterway. Areas adjoining lakes, reservoirs, and wetlands are also considered riparian areas, but this short course will focus mainly on rivers and streams. We each look at streams and rivers through our own personal lens and have certain things we value and appreciate. People who recreate on rivers, like kayakers or canoeists, might focus on the flow rate with a keen eye for rapids or obstacles. Some recreationists may be drawn to water clarity or to deep green pools and shiny white gravel bars. A fisherman may value a stream for its underwater features and focus his or her attention on where a well-placed cast might yield a big fish. If you're a bird watcher, you undoubtedly appreciate the abundance and diversity of bird populations found along streams, and you might manage creekside vegetation to obtain a better view of those birds. A rancher may focus on the abundance of vegetation that grows along a river that can be foraged for livestock. It's natural for humans to see and value the aspects of a creek or river that meets their own needs. Someone who manages a public water supply will appreciate a completely different set of values from a rancher or recreationist. Farmers who pull water from a river to irrigate crops will likely look at the water in terms of parameters like sediment or salinity. All growers will be concerned about water availability, especially during drought. Freshwater inflows to saltwater bays and estuaries are viewed as critical to those who harvest and enjoy shrimp, oysters, and other seafood. Some see estuary health as the primary value of a river. Different people value and appreciate different things about creeks and rivers. These values include a clean, reliable water source, abundant livestock forage, fish and wildlife habitat, recreational opportunities, and natural beauty. Each of these are important values, and they each are made possible by a well-functioning riparian area. It's not difficult to learn how to recognize a functioning riparian area. Look for adequate vegetation, large woody material, and landforms so that the following can occur. Dissipate stream energy, stabilize the banks, reduce erosion and trap sediment, build and enlarge the floodplain, store water and retain floodwaters, recharge groundwater, and sustain flow in the creek between rains. And if these processes are working, the riparian area has physical function. Then and only then can the values people want, like clean water, livestock forage, and recreational opportunities, be delivered. Riparian areas work like a fine-tuned machine. If one part of the machine is damaged or broken, the machine won't work quite right, and the production of values is impaired. In Lesson 4, you will learn about how riparian areas work and how to tell if they are functioning properly. We hope you enjoyed Lesson 3 of the Remarkable Riparian Short Course, brought to you by the Nueces River Authority with funding from the Dixon Water Foundation.